Granny said the Lord's gonna bless us. Next day, the landlord evicted us. I had never seen my mom fold. But on that day, I saw her fold clothes, fold her hands in prayers, fold underneath her eyes. She told me to fold everything that I care about inside of me. Everything I care about is inside. As we went to a place we say we never go, nowhere, know where my feelings are, still baggage that I carry inside of me till this day. Till this day. You know the best compliment you can give a black person? I see you. I see you. And all we wanted to do is be seen. So we walked all the way down Broad Street because all we had was a dollar and a dream. We didn't have enough for bus fare. So we walked all the way down Broad Street. Unfortunately for us, we got stopped by the police. Fortunately for us, all they took was our dollars. We still had our dreams. So we walked all the way down Broad Street until we got there. And when we got there, we laughed, we cried, but most importantly, we danced. We danced like no one was watching and everybody was watching at the same time. I was at the house party, music so loud, hands waving in the air. All I heard them say is, where the real kings at? 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 I was at the house party, music so loud, hands waving in the air. All I heard them say is, where the real queens at? 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 I was at the house party, music so loud, hands waving in the air. All I heard them say is, where the real kings at? Where the real queens at? We're the real kings, queens, queens, ing, 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 ing. Where I'm from, I'm from a place where they greet haters with middle fingers. Same place where they have their arms as open as 7-Eleven to embrace who you are. Same place where they give their hearts out like organ donors just to show how much they love you. Where I'm from. Ing, 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 ing. All we heard was the sirens. All I heard was my irregular heartbeat. And every time I hear my irregular heartbeat, I think to myself, when the last time I hugged a grown man like a newborn child? Probably the same time he got new bracelets. You know, handcuffs that fit tight around his wrist, as tight around his wrist as that robbery you performed yesterday. Probably as tight around his wrist as that unprotected sex he had that night to celebrate. But tell me, when do we ever feel safe? Cause there's no vault for our emotions, so we be feeling like, no one be feeling like, man, no one be feeling like us. So we always feel alone, but never alone. And all we wanna do is feel like the hero. You know, save ourselves and a few others. Well, that's the irony right there. Cause most people are birthed with a superpower. You know, alien to this world, flying high. Cause he's above it all, to avoid a space. Looking down at the world. Listening to all the world problems, thinking all the world problems is his and his problems is the world. Well, that's the world view on most people. They'd rather hide their smiles in a frown. In the same places where they greet haters with middle fingers. In the same places where they have their arms as open as 7-Elevens to embrace who you are. In the same places where they give their hearts out like organ donors, just to show how much they love you. And I know, I know he's thinking about this in the back of a cop car thinking about how yesterday he was gonna cop a car just to show people how driven he is. How he's looking at every one of these street corners, feeling like it's the inner road. Every single street corner looked like the inner road. Why all these street corners look like the inner road? We became boys and men from the inner road. Every single street corner looked like the inner road. Why? Cop turned back to say, shut up, nigga. This is the end of the road. And all I can hear is my irregular heartbeat. And every time I hear my irregular heartbeat, I think to myself, when the last time I hugged a grown man like a newborn child, 10 seconds before he got in that cop car, I told him, hey, 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 homie, man. Look, look, man. Look, man, I, I love you, man. I really mean I, I love you.
Can I tell y'all about a time I broke up with my girlfriend and my therapist at the same goddamn time? So, me and my girlfriend were going through the shits. We're having the same argument every day, every hour, every week. And I'm like, listen, I got health insurance. It covers couple therapy. Let's try it out. So we're, we're trying couple therapy. And the way couple therapy works is one time we have a session by ourselves solo. And then the next time we have it together as a couple and we kind of rotate. One week is mine, one week is hers. And then we have one together. So we're doing it. One time I'm, I'm having my solo session with the therapist, and I'm telling her about all these things going on. And she stops me and she says, Lindo, you should try out echo listening. Now, if you don't know what echo listening is, it's basically you say what you have heard, how you receive it, what your feelings are about it, and then what you observe, like their behavior in the moment or maybe a resolve. So I was like, bet, this is going to be my homework. The next time I see you, I'm going to pass this test. <laughs> um, and so I'm doing it all around the crib. Every time we talk in, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the echo listening. We go into our couple therapy together this time. So she's telling me everything that's going on. I'm listening, telling her what I heard, how I receive it, how to make me feel. And then by the time I get to the part of what I observe, she stops me. She wait, wait, you forgot. And then my therapist say, hold up, let him finish. And then my girlfriend says, wait, are you fucking him? And I froze. Because you, if you know anything about trauma, the way it works is it is either fight, flight, or freeze. And I froze in that moment because in that moment, I was looking at two people that was the reason why I was in a relationship. One person I'm in a relationship with, the other person is the reason why we're staying in the relationship. And I didn't know what to say. So I'm watching them argue for about like five minutes. And then we leave. And then we argue about that moment. We argue about it for days until we break up and now I'm feeling awkward. I'm feeling awkward because now I got to call the therapist and say, like, I don't feel comfortable coming to you anymore because, like, I'm single now and you kind of the reason why. <laughs> as much as I remember that phone call, I remember, I remember how she left me. I remember that day so clearly, tears rolling down my eyes as I was looking in the mirror for answers. She was looking for a way out. She was the type of woman I blow bubbles with on a windy day. Chased satellites in the skies. We stole parts for our time machine. As we fought dragons with just water guns. But no matter how many times we time travel, matter be past or future, it will always be present while you're leaving. And before you leave, love, before you leave, I want to French kiss your soul so my tongue can speak on its being. You being you, you being beautiful, you create color pillars in my stomach until they butterfly. You always on flight, that means you stay fly. And I swear to God, I have never, I have never, I have never seen you at airports. But I know you skydive because you have fallen for people. I have fallen for you. I hope you fall for me. But you worship the sky. And I'm too down to earth for you. But maybe my spaceship can land on planet. You are the world. My world revolves around you. I hope I'm never out your orbit. I got secrets to tell you. Well, that's a lie. Because the only space in between us is a space we have created. And I have created this you and I verse, this you and I verse, just to talk about you. Because I love the conversation in my head. Because even when I'm not thinking you all I thought, you got the biggest part of me, which is my heart. I hope you never lose it. Just in case I have kept the receipts, just in case I need that shit back. You know I have time travel and seeing our future and seeing you leave me. Because you got skeletons in your closet? Well, don't even worry. I have stories of baggage from me guilt tripping. But I can no longer afford that vacation. I've been on the pursuit of happiness. And I hope you come with me. I hope you're on a driver or a passenger seat side and don't worry about the money. The money will come soon.
you will leave me. And I know, I know you're expecting me to have some words to say to change the forecast of the weather we're in because I'm a poet. But all I can do is reside in a storm and think about moments that we, we smiled at each other, that we laughed together, that we held each other tightly, and we whispered to each other, I love you, and I remind you, and you laugh, you smile at me, and you bring me in for a tight hug and whisper in my ear, I love you, goodbye. Because we can no longer be any more committed than we are. And I hope, I hope in another lifetime when you are a butterfly and I'm merely the wind, embracing the flapping on your wings, consoling your soul to be the free spirit that you are, maybe then we can be more than we are one day, I did some desperate shit. There was nothing else on Netflix to watch. I was thinking about you. I was feeling lonely. So I called you, knowing you wouldn't answer. But I just wanted to be heard, so I left a voicemail. I left a voicemail saying, I hope... I hope one day we can skydive from space. And I know you're questioning why. I hope we can skydive from space to the point we don't even know we're falling. Falling from what you may ask. Falling in love, falling for each other, falling from grace because only clumsy, foolish people do th foolish things like love. I love you isn't a safe word. It isn't pineapple. It is more fruitful. It will grow as such fruit. I didn't feel safe after saying, I love you. I love you isn't a safe word. It isn't pineapple. It is more fruitful. It will grow as such fruit. I didn't feel safe after saying, I love you. One of the things about my uh, depression, um, I've been living with it for years. And um, sometimes it's seasonal. Sometimes it's, it's uh, right after a show. And it's seasonal because I have so many friends that entertain. So during the summertime, they out touring, working on projects, and I just feel so isolated with my emotions. The same way I feel after a show that I just did so well, I'm so happy, but I feel so isolated that it alienates me in a space where my self-talk becomes so awful. Like I'm unworthy of having these happy feelings because I'm not sharing it with no one. And I just go from the sadness to this, this uh, deep depression. You know, Gorilla has this line where, where she says, I can feel sad about it today and not give a fuck about it tomorrow. I never say those lines because I never feel that. If I'm ever sad about something, it's more than today. It's the many tomorrows where I'm just sad, where I'm depressed. Depression is a bullet with no name. And I've been held at gunpoint. Joy stolen from my being, me left on the floor feeling weak. More weak than there are in a year, feeling too weak. 14 days, this is more than a phase. Or a cry for help. Or playing the victim in the people court, they judge me. Innocent. But yet I feel guilty for the cause and effect that allow me still in this moment. Mannequin, man, I can't get myself out the positions they put me in. Let me bring you in to the crime scene. The irony of sadness looking trigger happy, aiming at me. <laughs> Tragedy and depression is a bullet with no name and no trigger warning. Bang, bang, bang. bang, bang. Shots on my window, shots on my window. And all I heard was bang. bang. Next day, word on the street is Cupid is a G.
He traded in all his bows and arrows for guns and bullets. And he had for every sorry person he see that can't show love. Oh, man. Oh, man. He'll never get me. I mean, never, never will he get me. As soon as I said that, I found myself walking down Broad Street with a tap on my shoulder and guess who it be? Now I'm fiercely pointing at my head. I heard him say, yo, where your heart at? Where that shit at? Yo, come out your pockets. Yo, stop acting like you need that shit. Yo, you trying to die tonight? I painfully grabbed from my chest, realizing that it's not even dead as he snatched it off my sleeve, walking away as coolly as he came. I, I remember walking home that night, feeling so disheartened, days following when I truly didn't know how I felt until I got a phone call from a private number and guess who it be? Yo, 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 do you want your heart back, huh? Do you want your heart back or not? Yo, speak up, yo, I can't hear you. Yo, who this? Yo, you already know who this is. Do you want your heart back or not? Yeah. Then you gotta pay for that shit. Yeah, son, I'm holding it for ransom. Damn. Without having enough love or being able to give enough love, somehow, somehow I hope he puns it to you. Cause you, you see more value than I do. As you told me how cold hard I am, you told me my kisses were like snowflakes on your cheek. Cause they lack the warmth of love behind them. So hopefully he calls me out for the punk guys I am for not showing you enough love and pull a drive-by on me. Riding around in his hoopty with his homies blazing an L, listening to Lil Wayne saying to himself, I ain't wanna hit him, but I hit him up. That chopper pop put his head through his arm. Yo, 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 so real quick, there was that young boy right there. Yeah, yeah, the one that can't show love. Yo, pass me that bingo. I'm about to bingo here right now, here right now. Bang, bang, bang. Slowly kill me with love. Bang, bang. Bang! I barely grabbed my chest, screaming out. <coughs> love hurts. <coughs> love hurts. He smoothly gets out his car with his nine clutch tightly over my body and says, Yeah, that's right. Love hurts. Love hurts like, like, like that heartbreak you left her with. But don't even worry about that shit. I gave her, listen to me, I gave her your heart. So she can finally say she has it. Ain't that something? Bang! 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 Those are the last thoughts ringing in my head as I now find myself in the hospital. Blood still leaking out my chest. The doctor is operating to take out every single one of those shots. The feel that I have, no pulse but yet a heartbeat, as long as our love live. And that day, I mean that very day, I realized Cupid is a G. I have lived for so long and have the privilege of having so many people in my life that I can hug so, so tightly and hold so close that it feels as though they're creating a force field around me to allow no harm to come in. And when they do, I wonder, what is protecting them? As I have learned how to cry in public, experience all the spectrum of tears from joy to tragedy. My face used to be deserted of emotion like a desert, but at any given moment, it can be a rainy monsoon. I remember the first time someone caught me crying. They grabbed me by my chin, held me, held my head up, and said to me, mm, why are you crying? What's the point and the reason for all the tears? Won't you allow that to just boil inside of you to become the boarded, burning passion that's inside of you? As if I couldn't hold water and fire at the same time. As if I couldn't cry tears and throw a punch at the same time. As if there's not sunshine and rain at the same time, but I was too much in my feelings to say this shit, to articulate this, but I wanted to tell them that 
boys do cry. They grow up to be men so full of tears that they can resolve droughts from far and near. And I just wanted to be well, to be well. I want to be black man, held in quiet, small spoon, soft body. I feel as though I am black man, holding and loud and spoon fed that I need to be hard body. I feel like nobody when somebody kills my softness to be tough. Call it tough love. Tough love is being punched until you don't cry. And crying is the only thing that stops the punching from hurting as much. Yeah, yeah. I want to be black man, held in quiet, small spoon, soft body. I feel as though I am black man, holding and loud and spoon fed that I need to be hard body. I feel like nobody when somebody kills my softness to be tough. Call it tough love. Tough love is being punched until you don't cry. And crying is the only thing that stops the punching from hurting as much. Yeah, yeah. Ain't flowers the blackest shit ever? <laughs> How they put dirt on us and we still grow, drown us in water and we survive, planting everything that keeps us grounded. They be shooting solar rays at us, hoping that we wither, not knowing our melanin be photosynthesis, the sun be our best friend. Ain't flowers the blackest shit ever? How they can put dirt on us and we still grow, drown us in water and we survive, Planet and everything that keeps us grounded, they be shooting solar rays at us, hoping that we would Not knowing that our melanin be photosynthesis, the sun be our best friend, ain't flowers. The blackest shit ever. Um, this is my old home. I would call it my childhood home. It was near, um, I used to live near a gang. I'm not gonna say the game name because that would be snitching. Um, <laughs> but it was where I, all right, so the gang that I lived nearby, they had these initiations where if you wanted to be a member, they would point out someone and you had to fight them. And then you would get so far into the fight, they would help you out and jump that person just to show that they had solidarity with you. I'm using that term kind of loosely. <laughs> um, I was often the person they picked that you had to fight. So I've been jumped so many times. And it was the first time I realized I didn't have to throw a punch to survive because I had 10 people over me, sometimes 15, sometimes five. And I still got up. I think that was the moment I developed into being coming a, a pacifist because I survived those fights without throwing a punch. But I also think those were the moments where I developed my social anxiety. Because every turn of the corner, I had to figure out how to speak, when to speak, who to speak to. So I rehearsed all these conversations in my head, anticipating any interaction for my survival. You can go to the next, John. Uh, this is inside my home. You can kind of guess who room this is. I've always been a blur. <laughs> always been into comic books. It's been um, another survival for me. I escaped this act to, to imagine a possibility that is not of my own. You can move to the next, John. All right, I, I, put, I, I put this picture because um, I did this shit. <laughs> Everybody in my household knew I did this shit. So I had this thing when I was little. I, I, I used to like to light things on fire and put them out really quickly. It was, something, it was something that was just so gratifying that I could put out the fires that I started. That might have been a trauma response, but I don't know. Um, one time, the fires got too big. It wasn't just a piece of paper. And I couldn't put out the piece of paper. 
that started the other joint, that started this joint, that ended up burning a part of that wall. When my family smelled the smoke, they saw it, no one called for help. They started this assembly line going from the bathroom down to the steps to put out the fire. And then we ran outside, let it air out, and one of the neighbors called the ambulance. By the time the ambulance came, the fire was out, we were good. And it made me realize we had each other more than anybody else had us. Next slide. Um, I want to tell you I, I grew up working class, um, but I was probably more working poor, as you see the conditions of this kitchen. And I want to lie to you and tell you the kitchen looked better than this. No, it kind of looked just like this. Um, the only thing is the, the stove was against the wall. <laughs> I'm glad you're able to laugh at my trauma. Um, <laughs> it took me years to be able to develop where you're at right now. I, I, I love how humor is sometimes a medicine, sometimes there's a coping mechanism, sometimes it's a relief, sometimes it just is laughter. Something particular about this kitchen was um, my favorite story I like to tell people about is uh, my poppy. My poppy one day went to the supermarket and he brought home crabs. And that day I learned that you have to cook crabs live. So he had a big bag of crabs. He had set them on this counter. And then when he set them on this counter, they had fell out and they had landed on the floor. <laughs> so. All the crabs were going on. I hear my poppy yell. I, I run down the steps to see what's going on. And it was like a scene from Looney Tunes. Because I saw my poppy with a pitchfork and then a crab. And it was like they was in a, some type of sword fight, right? And then I'm finding this hilarious in my childhood as a child. So I yell, oh my god, we got roaches and crabs. In my adulthood, that joke is even funnier because I'm like, that's worse than an STI. <laughs> I, I, I love how laughter can be relief, can be medicine, and sometimes it can be what it is. Um, we can go to the next, John. What they would tell you about working class people or as I classify myself, working poor people, is we shouldn't worry too much about the roses. There's an expression, I don't know if y'all heard it, but I have heard it several times, like everybody deserves bread and roses. Bread standing for the essential things you need in life, like food, shelter, health care. And roses meaning everything that allows you rest to do those things. Sometimes it can be relaxation. Sometimes it could just be time. Sometimes it could just be moments of being unproductive. And sometimes it can be items. And when I was growing up, my, my family couldn't give me toys around the holiday. They couldn't spoil me with those experiences. So I went past a lot of holidays without having any like items that I could talk about with my friends. But anytime my granny used to go to the grocery store for bread, she would be like, Lindo, 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 you want to go to the grocery store? And she would take me to the grocery store. And when we got to the checkout line, she was like, do you want anything from the gumball machine? Those toys, those X-Men cars, those items that I got from the gumball machine provided me so much roses in the passing days where I didn't get gifts every holiday because I could play with them for years. Um, this is a picture of me and my granny. She kind of looks like the cartoon figures where you, you, you see her from my perspective, and so you don't see her face or anything like that. And you see me struggling to get in the car to get a toy from the gumball machine. Um, I was trying to find a better way to end this, but Gum on machine, y'all. <laughs> it all makes sense. It all makes sense. <laughs> um. Ain't life funny.
Okay to cry too.